welcome back to the channel everybody today we're going to talk about boost control and how we can use it not just to make power but for advantages in traction and reliability for an engine perhaps you have a stock bottom end evo subaru civic whatever you don't want to spike torque too hard so we do boost control a little bit different. Maybe it's just that it's front wheel drive. You don't want to blow the tires off. Maybe you have an all wheel drive car and you just want to make as much as you can make. Well, we're going to talk about this in more detail. So to start off, let's open our WinPEP Dyno software. We're going to look at a fairly typical boost curve, I think. This is a combo from a little while ago. This was an 8.2 to 1 compression 3.2 liter V6 in my car. This was on 92 octane. As you can see, boost curve comes up. It's pretty flat straight across, 22 and a half pounds more or less. I had a bunch of timing out just to make sure that it was going to be safe. But this is the boost curve that we're all used to. Comes up, stays flat, does its job. Bob's your uncle. In contrast, we can do something like this, where we have a stock bottom end. We want to make sure that it stays safe. So the boost starts off really, really low down here. Basically wastegate line, eight pounds, maybe a little bit more. We make decent torque. And then about 5,000, all of a sudden, I started getting nuts and ramped it all in to 6,000. Now, same 22 and a half pounds, but for that stock motor, I was keeping the torque low. I probably had a little bit more timing in because it was on E85. But the idea is that when I shift here at 8,000 and it drops to 6,000, I'm already past the danger zone down here where we could have a, a big spike. These are two separate turbo systems, so there's some differences there anyway. But that aside, we can kind of see artificially making some boost creep is actually advantageous in this case. Here we have the boost control tables in the AM Infinity. We have a wastegate duty cycle table versus RPM. We have boost target versus throttle and gear. Now, as you will see as I start to trace through, the wastegate duty cycle is increasing to help keep boost continually growing. And then as the boost target goes up, obviously we have to have more and more and more. Now look what happens here where we're in fifth gear, we're going to start jumping columns. All of a sudden, we're trying to force in as much as we can. And you can see that if the target was higher, it would continue to ramp until we get to 100%, which that particular turbo was never able to do. But one, one way to do the boost creep is if your turbo system wouldn't naturally do that, you continue to... Continue to increase wastegate duty cycle as RPM increases to help keep the torque flat or growing, as the case may be, and then get more boost, get more power. We can also do that in the boost target table as well, but truly it references the same thing. So if we want to keep the boost flat for a given target, it has to ramp up. If we want more boost higher up, then we're going to command more. Here's an example of my Evo from about 10 years ago now. It looks like almost 10 years, April 23rd and April 5th. You can see that this particular car had a 67 mil turbo on it. It would hold 39 and a half, 38 and a half, pretty much all the way out. I made 800 wheel at the time. We also have a pump gas boost plot here where it did six 633 on pump, one of the higher pump gas Evos, I think, that we've done. But 
you can see that I was doing the same thing. Oops, accidentally zoomed. To get that power number, I didn't necessarily want a ton of boost down low. So 21, 22 slowly starts to creep up till we get to the higher RPM where I know that it can handle it. And then we're 26, 26 and a half here peak. 26.7, I guess. So we artificially increase the power and make it more usable versus RPM and gearing. So some interesting things to think about when you do your boost control. You don't want to necessarily just put in the same value all the way across. Maybe you're going to have a, a massive ramp like this where it's 80 to 100. And it's just a progressive increase. I, I pressed the interpolate button there, but you can see how that would continue to grow theoretically versus RPM. And then per gear, you might do something different because the beginning of fourth gear might be different than the end of fourth gear or third gear or second gear as the case may be. Anyway, if this content is something that you guys like, please consider subscribing. Please, please press the like button, share with your friends. If you have questions, put them in the comments down below. Help uh, me help you by letting me know what you like and what you don't like so that we can continue to grow the channel and content. Thanks again, guys. Take care.